Hey everybody, Cameron here with the Sea Butters channel. Today we're taking a look at the EPF Fang. It's kind of a new design that's out in the CR10 community. And I'm a new owner of a CR10 and I wanted something that would fit a more quiet fan. Um, but also I didn't want a 40 by 10 millimeter Noctuac because I've heard, you know, the low airflow can be an issue. So I, I wanted something that could support a 20 millimeter depth fan. So uh, these two holes are where you remove the original cover and then you just unscrew the fan on the back end. I'll leave a link to the STL file for this new fang um, thanks to the creator who uh, also mentioned there in the description. But yeah, you just want to unhook your two fans. And there are two different sets of fans. There's some uh, 3M, or sorry, screws in these things. The top part cooling fan has a little bit smaller uh, screws, but you'll want to hang on to all the screws as they come out because you'll repurpose some of them. But the fans come off really easy. The next step is going to be fitting this fang on these two holes. So in order to do that, you're going to need uh, some slightly longer screws this, uh, for this part. The default screw is a 16 millimeter and you'll want a 20 millimeter screw. But all these screws come off very easily. So it's a good idea to pull that weave back to give you a little more uh, workspace to work with. So here's the stock screw. It has a little washer on it. You'll want to remove that washer and put it on the larger 20 millimeter screw. And the author of this thing uh, details that process out on his, the, his Thingiverse page. But I uh, just thought I'd let you see that here. The, the other reason I wanted to do uh, this uh, this knock to a fan is just to, to quiet things down. I've I've done the NEMA uh, brackets on the motors on the X axis and the Y axis, and that really helped quiet things down. I've changed out the fans in the uh, control unit box itself, and all that has contributed to really quiet noise while I'm 3D printing, at least compared to stock. But uh, my last thing was just getting that, that, I didn't realize how noisy that, that hot end fan was until I quieted everything else down. And I was like, wow, yeah, this fan is, is going crazy. But I didn't want to uh, not have good cooling for my hot end either. So anyways, this seemed like a very good solution and the timing was such that it got released uh, right around the same time I was looking. And I really liked the design. Um, I mean, it looks it looks beautiful. Uh, it's one of the, probably one of the more beautiful prints I've I've ever done. Uh, of course, I've only done like ten three D prints at this point. But uh, but here here we're installing the part fan on top, and you, what you want to do is put the screws in from behind. Uh, I went from the front first, and that is not the way to go because it, then the fan is not actually held in place. So back to front on that part fan. So as you can see, I, I cut the old fan off and it's it's got two wires, a yellow and a blue one. And luckily these Noctua fans come with a little adapter where you can basically um, solder in, well, not solder, but you use the little clips to put a adapter in so you can easily swap out the fan. So even if this Noctua eventually wears out at some point, you can put another one in super quickly. It lets you add a little three pin adapter. There it is right there. 
and the, the wiring is such that you want to match the yellow with the red. It's a good idea to get to test this with the multimeter as well in case you're you're not sure or in case <laughs> Creality changes their scheme for wiring. But for me, the red matched with the yellow and the black matched with the blue. And those these little tabs kind of just let you shove the wires in and then pinch them down tight. Just give them a little squeeze with some pliers. I, I would uh, I would actually, having played with it now, I would actually forgo the pliers and just straight up pinch it with your your fingers. It's it doesn't take a whole lot of strength to to penetrate the wires. So there we have our adapter installed. And that makes it nice for swapping out fans in the future. If I wanted a nice 40 by 40 millimeter fit high static pressure fan on there, I could do that. But for now, I'll go with uh, this this 40 by 20 Noctua, which should be pretty pretty quiet. So we'll use those those screws we undid uh, originally and plug plug those those in. And, and I put them on the first notch, not the second notch, just because they weren't long enough. But you kind of have to thread the screw down through uh, the back hole and not through both holes at once because it kind of won't fit if you do it that way. And once that's done, we'll plug it in. And I kind of tied things off uh, neatly with some electrical tape here. One thing I ran into is you'll want to that that fan three pin adapter you see there. Um, the way I taped this was not great because it put the three pin plastic right in line with some of the wires. So as my hot end went back and forth uh, as I was printing, it was kind of starting to pinch the wires when it got close and then move away and it moved further away from the wires, but I was worried it would start pinching. So I actually took that off and, well, I didn't take it off, but I just repositioned it to make sure that three pin plastic adapter is more on the back side of the wires instead of um, near the, the blue housing. So that just kept it away from, from pinching anything. And then uh, I used some, some uh, Velcro tape, I guess. It's not really tape, it's kind of just Velcro wrap that I have lying around and that makes a nice adjustable way to keep your cables nice and tidy. So now with the unit powered up, you can hear how quiet this thing is. And I actually am gonna turn up the audio here just so you can hear it a little louder. This is artificially uh, made made uh, louder in my video editing software just so you can hear the fan a little better because it is it is quite nice now with all the mods I've done so you now that you can hear the my z-axis doesn't have the the NEMA mount on it just because the z-axis is fairly quiet in general but you can hear how loud that z-axis is and compared to the fan I mean the fans the least of your worries now at this point so off and running, and uh, the first thing I print here is a very tall part. I think it was about, probably about uh, 12 inches tall. So it was a really tall print that I just went right into. And I didn't have any issues with cooling. The print quality seemed really nice. I Like I say, I'm still inexperienced, but... Uh, I did not notice any degradation in quality and my prints have been coming out really nice in general but that's been due to figuring out bed leveling I've got my PEI sheet on there uh, now this uh, fan cooling uh, it seems to be working really nicely these days so um, I'll actually show you here's, here's that print and it turned out really nice obviously the camera always picks up I mean, it looks it looks bad. It looks worse on camera than it ever does in real life. But you can tell, at the very least, everything is very consistent. And this uh, ended up being a really solid uh, tray piece that I ended up printing. So, 
anyways, I hope that that helps you guys out who are looking to do this mod or want to check out that EPF thing, but I've had really good results. And I hope this was useful to you. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. More 3D printing videos soon. And thanks for watching.